If you're a fan of Leffen, you probably love edge guarding. There are definitely plenty of characters in Smash Ultimate who can't accomplish much off stage, but there are likewise many who can go super deep and obliterate most recovery attempts. In this video, we'll take a look at the 10 characters we think are the best at edge guarding in Smash Ultimate and determine who is the most devastating off stage. Have you checked out ProGuides.com? If you're looking for character guides, tier lists, and instant access to coaches, ProGuides.com is the place to be. We've also got courses with top players like MKLeo, Zero, and Esam, so you can learn Smash from your favorite pros. So, what even is edge guarding exactly? The edge, sometimes referred to as the ledge, is the term used for the grabbable ends of the stage. Guarding the edge itself is not so literally the premise of edge guarding, but more so the edge is usually the goal destination of a recovering player. Because of this, edge guarding is the term for the process of attacking opponents off of the stage as they attempt to recover. Because no character can stay in the air forever, being off stage is a very temporary state for anyone. Whether you're the recovering character or the edge guarding character, you'll eventually either recover back to the edge or be KO'd off of the bottom blast zone if you stay off stage for too long. I, I don't think I have to tell you that. Despite this, the player in the edge guarding position is still at a great advantage because they are almost always closer to the stage and or have more recovery resources available. Characters who are good at edge guarding will have one or more of the following. Good recovery to enable them to go very far off stage and make it back. Good range so they can hit opponents without going off as far and require less precision. And good frame data so they can swing quickly on reaction and throw out multiple attacks in one off stage sequence. Let's start by looking at Lucina, perhaps the most simple edge guarder in the game. Lucina's back air and forward air both have great range and knockback. They also come out pretty quickly, so Lucina can run off stage and easily swing at opponents in front of or behind her. Although less reliable, her down air also has tons of range and the potential to spike opponents if spaced correctly, resulting in early KOs. Lucina also has a less common edgeguarding option with her counter. Using a counter allows a character to edgeguard without worrying about trading or getting hit by an opponent's recovery move and is a great option against characters who need to recover with a hitbox. Lucina's counter also activates very quickly and doesn't put her too low to recover if it misses. Speaking of recovery, Lucina's up B travels very far vertically, is intangible on frame 1 in the air, and has a fast hit that can add another attack to her edgeguarding. Marth has all of these same edgeguarding traits, but is less consistent due to his sour spots and tipper. Pikachu is an extreme edgeguarding machine. He has one of the best recoveries in the game, so he can go almost anywhere and make it back quickly. His aerials all come out pretty fast and have low lag, so he can throw out many and place them wherever the opponent is. Every one of his aerials besides up air is also active for a while, so he doesn't need to be incredibly precise with timing. Starting with Smash Ultimate, Pikachu's down air also has a spike hitbox, which he can even use twice in a row against telegraphed recoveries. Why did he need this? Against most characters, if you recover high and the opponent goes for a low edge guard, you'll make it back to the stage just fine. Pikachu, on the other hand, can go low and still cover high recoveries with his thunder. Pichu shares almost exactly the same edge guarding strengths as Pikachu. Mr. Game & Watch has no mercy for recovering opponents. His edge guarding is among the easiest and yet most effective in Smash Ultimate. Game & Watch's back air is a multi-hit move that stays active for a long time. It also has lots of range with disjointed hitboxes and low cooldown, so he can throw out multiple bears with little worry of getting hit or even missing. Since Game & Watch is a pretty floaty character, he can also spend more time off stage in general. His back air alone is one of the best edge guarding options in the game, but where the turtle fails, the key is... the... Key. Yeah. Game & Watch's down air is really good, you get where we're going with this. Like his back air, his down air is also disjointed with lots of range below him that can interrupt so many recoveries really easily. Oh, and it can spike too. Game & Watch can go super low and far off stage thanks to the incredible travel distance of his up B. Like Lucina and Marf's, his up B also has intangibility and its own hitbox to protect him while adding another edge guarding option. Joker is looking like the best character in the game right now, and his edge guarding prowess is a big reason why. Joker's back air is very fast and has extremely low end lag in the air. 
This allows him to throw out multiple back airs off stage and recover thanks to the great distance on either variation of his recovery. His back air uses his dagger, which offers a disjoint with decent range. With Arsene, back air maintains the same frame data but with even more range and significantly stronger knockback. Arsene also adds a spike hitbox to his down air for an even deadlier option. With Arsene, Joker's down B becomes one of the best and most reliable counters in the game. Down guns are also a unique edge guarding move that Joker can opt for. By shooting his guns downward, he can interrupt recoveries with very low knockback to steal jumps and gimp opponents from a safe distance. Snake may not be a character that typically comes to mind when you think of edge guarding, but he has one move that single handedly puts him on this list Nikita. Snake's remote missile, often referred to as Nikita, is basically an airborne bomb that can be freely controlled by the player. Nikita deals as much damage as an average aerial and has plenty of KO potential. Besides for how easily it can be aimed towards any opponent, this move is so useful because Snake can edgeguard reliably without even going off stage at all. Snake can edgeguard without Nikita too, using his powerful aerials or dropping grenades in C4s to greet recoveries with a bang. There won't often be a list of characters who are good at some aspect of gameplay in Ultimate without mentioning Palutena. Yep, she's great at edgeguarding too. As with many other situations, Palutena can edgeguard effectively with... Wait for it... Nair. Yes, a grandiose revelation, I know. Nair is active for a long time and always sends the opponent away from the direction Palutena is facing. Her forward air and back air are also useful offstage with a bit more precision required. Additionally, Palu's down air is one of the fastest spikes in the game. If going deep off stage doesn't seem like the best idea in some matchups, Palutena could stay on stage and easily two frame almost anything with her down tilt, which sets up for further edgeguarding. Ganondorf may not be the greatest character overall, but his edgeguarding stands out and holds up with the best. Most importantly, Ganon's aerials pack a punch. Even if he doesn't land his downer spike, which can KO some characters under 10%, his up air, back air, forward air, and neutral air all send the opponent away from Ganon with great knockback. All of his aerials also have surprisingly low end lag, which means that Ganondorf can potentially throw out two KO moves in an offstage sequence and still recover afterward. His hitboxes are large and reliable, and neutral air has two hits to eliminate the need for timing precision. Although his up B isn't the greatest recovery move, the grab attack from it can KO early as well. Jigglypuff is another example of a not-so-great character who can edgeguard really well. Her floatiness, coupled with multiple double jumps and amazing aerial mobility, let Jigglypuff stay off stage for long sequences and get to wherever the opponent is. Her neutral air and forward air stay active for long periods of time and launch the opponent away from her and thus further off stage. She can link these aerials together reliably to carry opponents to the blast zone, setting up for further edgeguards if she can't straight up KO them. Back air is a bit more difficult to connect off stage, but it offers strong knockback for fairly early edgeguard KOs close to the blast zone. We mentioned that range is a great attribute for edgeguarding, and Shulk has some of the best range in the game. His forward air in particular covers pretty much the exact space you'd be aiming for in a typical edgeguard situation, and he can throw out multiple fares in one edgeguard sequence, especially with Jump Monado art. Jump Art allows Shulk to go very far off stage and lets him get there quickly too. With Smash Art, one fair can be enough to close out stocks at mid percents. His down air spikes and stays active longer than most down airs with tons of range as well. Shulk can also reverse his air slash recovery to hit opponents as he recovers. Last but not least, we have Inkling. With one of the best recoveries in the game, Inkling can go off as far as she needs to to get to her offstage opponents. Her back air has amazing frame data and makes reactive edgeguard spacing extremely reliable. Although it's a bit slower, forward air is stronger and stays active for a while for less precise edgeguards. Neutral air has super low end lag so she can drop down quickly with it and go for a second aerial to trap the opponent's options, and down air, although laggy, is a spike. Inkling's up B also has a very weak hitbox as it begins, which can give opponents similarly to Joker's down guns. At the end of the day, you don't want to be off stage against any of these characters, but there is one in particular that can easily oppress just about anyone. Mr. Game & Watch. 
Game & Watch's back air and down air are disjointed and active for long periods of time, making for easy and consistent edge guards that don't really care how good your recovery is for the most part. And his recovery is virtually uncontestable, so he never has to worry too much about going off stage carelessly. Who do you think is the best edge guarder in Smash Ultimate? Let us know in the comments and be sure to subscribe and click that bell to keep up with more Smash content from Pro Guides.